Was 2023 the worst year ever for Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy, or do you think worse is yet to come? Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. First of all, I do not believe there is a single person out there who's going to claim that 2023 was anywhere close to a good year for Harry and Meghan. So let's think back to what was going on in December of 2022. Harry and Meghan had released their Netflix docuseries titled Harry and Meghan, and people were making fun of it. People were ridiculing it because it was pretty stupid. But at the same time, it didn't completely destroy their reputations, and we were waiting to see what Harry was going to do in Spare. Then Spare hit the shelves in January of 2023, and it put to rest any notion that the book was going to be anything but a big fat wine fest from a spoiled prince. And then Harry did all those interviews trying to promote the book, which certainly didn't help matters because he made himself look like a complete idiot. Meghan, meanwhile, was laying low. She was being quiet. She didn't want to have to deal with the backlash that Harry was facing. She figured that she should start to separate her brand, whatever that is, at that point in time. And that's something she has kept up basically all year long. Even as delusional as Harry and Meghan are, they cannot deny that they have failed time and time again this year. That's something that's so incredibly obvious, even they have to accept it. Now, of course, they're not blaming themselves for their failures. They're still blaming the royal family. But I suspect if Harry ever gets around to writing another autobiography for Penguin Random House, he probably will mention that 2023 was an absolute disaster for himself and Meghan. Even though Harry's book Spare was the fastest selling nonfiction work ever, I wouldn't really say it was a resounding success. The interviews he did were ridiculous. As Alexander Larman writes in The Spectator, the interviews alternated between defensive, irritable, and unduly arrogant. But that was just the beginning of the year for Harry and Meghan, and things got a lot worse over the course of the year. In his court case, Harry certainly didn't win. I think he lost more than he won in that one, even though people are calling it a victory. And then he and Meghan were described as the biggest losers in Hollywood by The Hollywood Reporter. And then, of course, there was that video clip of the endeavors of Archwell over the past 12 months that people made an absolute mockery of because it was such a stupid video. I mean, it was funny that the video clip came out at the same time the tax documents that Archwell filed came out. We know Archwell lost money. We know Archwell did diddly squat in 2023, but Harry and Meghan are still going to try to make it seem otherwise. So in this article on Meghan and Harry and the Spectator, Larman writes, If one was to be generous, you might feel sorry for Harry and Meghan. A strange emotion granted to bear towards two fabulously wealthy people who lead a life of privilege and luxury that most people could not even begin to conceive. Yet, ever since their quasi-abdication from the royal family in early 2020, an event that would have been the year's most talked about occurrence, had it not been then wholly overshadowed by the pandemic, there is a sense that they are both desperately peddling anything they can in a bid to remain both relevant and a global brand. It is pretty interesting, isn't it, how Harry and Meghan have these big plans, and their big plans never succeed. And sometimes it is because of factors outside of their control, like the pandemic, for example. They thought they were going to move to the U.S. and be big hits immediately. But, I mean, even if that were possible, it couldn't have happened because the pandemic hit. And now I think Larman is hitting the nail on the head. They are both desperately peddling anything they can in a bid to remain both relevant and a global brand. And that's exactly why they can't stick with anything. That's why one day we'll hear that Meghan Markle is going to make the next goop and she's going to be the next Gwyneth Paltrow. And then we'll hear that she's trying to go back into acting or she's trying to be a producer or she's going to be an influencer and she's going to make lots of money on Instagram or my favorite, Meghan is going to get into politics. The fact is she's just throwing a bunch of crap at the wall and hoping that something is going to stick. You see, there isn't any work that Megan is truly passionate about. She just wants more fame and more money, and whatever can help her towards that goal is good enough for her. Larman also writes, famously, the motto of Harry's family is never complain, never explain. He has ignored both parts of that adage and has spent countless time both complaining and explaining. Now the world has listened, and it has decided that it is thoroughly sick of both him and his wife. Couldn't have put it better myself. I mean, overexposure has been a real problem for both Harry and Meghan this year, especially Harry, though, with Spare and the docuseries and all the other crap that we've heard from him. It seems like Harry missed the point that part of the reason people are so interested in the royal family is because of this air of mystique. It's because we don't know a whole lot about who they are privately. We don't know a whole lot about their private lives, or at least we're not supposed to. That is something that has kept people interested in the royal family for such a long time. 
So clearly, Harry made a big mistake when he decided to air all the family's dirty laundry. That made people lose interest in him because we learned that, oh, he's just as dysfunctional as the most dysfunctional person in our family. If we want to hear some whiny, entitled man-baby complain about his privileged existence, well, then we'll listen to that cousin in our family who has the same problem. The crazy thing, too, about 2023 for Harry and Meghan is that it seemed like they didn't get anything right. It really did seem like they had some kind of curse the opposite Midas touch. Everything they touched turned to crap. It was really just baffling to watch as an observer. It was almost like it was some kind of big joke, and at the end of the year, they were going to say, gotcha, but they didn't. We kept asking ourselves, how can two people be so lacking in self-awareness? How can two people be so thick? But clearly they can, and they are. Larman writes, there have been countless missteps. This suggests that Harry and Meghan are in desperate need either of better advisors or of actually listening to the people who they presumably pay handsomely for their counsel. The much ballyhooed Netflix series in which they spoke their highly selective version of their truth last year was an embarrassing and costly flop and meant that Harry's actually far better documentary on the Invictus Games this year was all but ignored. Megan's self-indulgent podcast, the recipient of a $20 million deal with the streaming service Spotify, was described witheringly by The Hollywood Reporter as inert. Meanwhile, the company executive Bill Simmons castigated the pair as effing grifters. And he's right. Now, in the beginning, their docuseries, Harry and Meghan, was hailed as a success because in the beginning it looked like it was. But then people watched the second episode and people quickly figured out what it was all about and people didn't want to listen anymore because it was so incredibly biased. Harry and Meghan didn't even bother trying to share another perspective. It was all about their truth, all about their experience. And most people saw right through it. Most people saw it as the big steaming pile of BS that it really was. And as for Megan's podcast series, well, I would say that inert was a really nice way to describe it. I mean, in the whole thing, she just talked about herself. She actually had important guests on there, people who would be interesting to listen to, but she didn't let them get a word in edgewise. So no wonder it wasn't successful. No wonder Spotify canceled their project. And that was also the best they could come up with. Harry couldn't come up with anything that would work. And that was Megan's big idea that, again, was an absolute flop. According to Larman, the rot had already set in when they were mercilessly mocked in a February episode of South Park as the dumb prince and his stupid wife. Nothing has happened since to restore their dignity or the reputation that the pair seemed to crave, end quote. And not only that, but then they were lampooned on Family Guy. Chris Rock took a swipe at them, too. I mean, comedians have had a great time making fun of Harry and Meghan, and I understand why. The jokes write themselves. The two of them just really are so absurd, so over the top. It's almost hard to believe that they're real. So in 2024, is there really any chance that they're going to be able to turn things around? Well, according to Larman, there are an awful lot of court cases for Harry to deal with, so his expensive lawyers will be busy. Now, he's right about that, but is that going to actually help Harry? Is that going to bring him peace? No. He has started this war against the media, but he's going to be the loser. He should know. This is a war that is not worth fighting. About this war against the media, Larman writes, no doubt he will win most, if not all of them, but every single setback and humiliation that he faces will be gleefully reported by the international press, who he has gone out of his way to set himself against, end quote. And that's the crazy thing about all these lawsuits that Harry has filed. I mean, he really believes he's this dragon slayer. Harry, you're not. And then I did see a tweet earlier that apparently Harry has settled with the mail online. I haven't found out yet if that's true or not, but if he has, then clearly he has given up on this dragon slaying mission, which was a really stupid mission to begin with. And then as for Megan, yeah, we keep hearing about these projects that she's working on, but we don't believe she's actually working on anything. Again, Megan has no marketable skills. She has no talent. She has no work ethic. She's not going to be a success, period. If she were going to be a success in Hollywood, it already would have happened when she was much younger. And as a politician, I mean, what a stupid idea. She needs to stop talking about that altogether. And she's already signed with WME, but so far we haven't heard about any projects. So if they can't help her, I don't believe anybody can. As Larman writes in the Spectator article, they really are their own worst enemies, conducting their very public personal lives with an unappealing level of entitlement and smugness. This has led to them becoming the bête noire of everyone, from committed Republicans to the most ardent monarchists, end quote. 
And so I believe in 2024, we're going to see more of the same from Harry and Meghan. They're going to continue doing anything they can to try to get attention for themselves. They're going to continue with their whining. They're going to continue with their attacks against the royal family. But as fewer and fewer people begin to listen, maybe they will start to figure out a new way to live. Let's just wait and see. All right, guys, that's all the time that we have for today. So now I want to know, what do you think is going to happen to Harry and Meghan in 2024? Do you think 2023 was the worst year ever? Is 2024 going to improve? Or is it going to be worse than ever for the delusional hypocrites? Please let me know your opinion below in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to like and share it with anybody else who would enjoy it too. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.